Hi, this is Greg Sprunk. I own Superior Cleaning Equipment, and today we're going to talk about unloaders. And I am joined by Jason Remmers. Ten years? Yes. Ralph Gonzalez, 12 years. Mm -hmm. Ralph's a parts manager. Jason's the lead uh, service tech and uh, here in the shop. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about something that doesn't get talked about a lot, um, at least not to me. And that was the different types of unloaders and we'll talk about what we're selling, but I'd like to have these guys input on the different types of unloaders. And so we're going to start with, uh, a small thousand PSI unloader, right? That, yeah. Where, where do you find most, this, this unit on? On the hot tube. Yeah, the older hot tube. Yeah, the older, and then 700 PSI machines. Now, should, this has a, this, this has a, a deal on it that basically looks like pressure in and pressure out, right? A lot of people like to screw up on loaders. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Should you? No. no. Once you set it. Once you set it, you shouldn't mess with it. Even on this one? Mm -hmm. Even though it's got a, like the arrow and it's, everything? It's not different than this one. Really? Yeah. Okay. So all of these have an adjustable, this one, these two have an adjustable valve. This one has a... a, a yeah, they, they all do actually. Do they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a common misconception about this though is that people use these to adjust pressure, yes. and they never should, right? Yeah, not to should leave it alone. Except for the little commercial. What about like the little Generax, not commercial, little little Home Depot, Lowe's things, and they've got the same thing on them. Same thing, they should just be a set and forget also? Yeah. Even really on the cheap stuff? Yeah. Okay. So, good to know, right? One of the things we run into all the time is that pressure washers, of almost all of pressure washers, are set at the factory. and. These unloaders have a spike pressure, right? Yes. Are they all the same, even for these industrial loaders, all the way down onto some of the smaller ones? Is it a... You should only have like a 500 PSI spike. Right, when they let go of the trigger and you've got a pressure gauge on it. And we're gonna add Except some... this one. That one, no? No, no. Okay, so let's go back to the unloaders. So, uh, 1,000 PSI, what's something like this cost, Ralph? Uh, they're about 82 bucks. Okay. How long should even something like this last? Well, if everything goes right, it should last a long time. Really? Depending on your water condition. Okay. If you have a lot of minerals, maybe rust. Uh, let's say you're spring. using a pressure washer three or four days a week, a year. That should last you quite a while. Okay. Yep. And then what's this loader type here? It's a VRT loader. VRT? Yeah. It's okay. It's the most common one that we sell. It is. Is this on a lot of Landa and yeah. Carter units? Mm -hmm. Mostly yeah. just Landa. Yeah. And this is a so this a typical loader gear. You've got your in, you've got your out, right? Bypass. Got your bypass, which is that? Yeah. Okay. This a lot of times we'll take the bypass and we'll, it'll it'll run. If you have a float tank, it runs back to the float tank, so there's no pressure buildup in here. Mm -hmm. If you've got a trigger mounted unit, it runs to this bypass runs, we plumb it into the top of the tank, mm -hmm. right? right? Yeah. And if not, it runs in a loop that goes back, back in the pump. Back, yeah, which is kind of a worst case scenario, right? Because yeah. what happens is you let go of the, of the gun and it's a hot water machine. Uh, the flow switch is supposed to shut off, but even though the flow switch shuts off, you're still circulating this water in this, right? Yeah. Small space and that water gets hot, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna, if you're going to let go of the trigger gun on a pressure washer, um, probably don't want to do that for much less than 30 seconds, a minute? A couple of minutes. A couple of minutes. Yeah. And if it's, if you, if, because what happens is you, you run this, this runs back to the, the bottom of the pump. It's only literally, Less than a foot most of the time, right? It's circling the same water over and over. Yep. Really fast. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so then what happens is, even though the burner might have been shut off, that what, what this does is um, it'll heat up inside where the packings, the valves, all that stuff. It's, it, it's, is it recircling water through that side of yeah. the wet end of the pump, yeah. right? Yeah, it's going right Okay. Yeah. So another, that's kind of another reason why we wanted to do this video was that, you know, people say, well, it's got an unloader on, it's gonna let go of the trigger and I can let it run as long as they want. The heater's not on, but that's not really true. This is really hard on this part. And the other thing about unloaders, when you let go of that trigger, every time you let go of that trigger, isn't that 
hammering a spring in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing this, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it wears out. So. That's just going to wear it out faster, right? Because yeah. you can only do so many of these. And every time you're doing that, you're at least you're lessening the strength of that spring, mm -hmm. you know, little by it's, little. It's a pin that covers a hole. Oh. Every time you hit it, it hammers at that hole and that pin. Oh. Over and over. Okay. Another thing that wears out your loader is uh, if you have a leaking gun. Yep. If it dribbles out the end, it'll reset itself. As soon as that pressure gets lower, it'll hammer again and again. Oh, so that, almost like if you have a leaking dunk on a, uh, not auto start stop, what am I saying? Like I was saying, it's a running machine. Yeah, the auto start stop, right? So it'll, 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 it'll kick the machine back on again, yeah. automatically and just keep cycling it. So as the, the pressure gets low enough, it'll, it'll reset itself. Okay. So that's a leaky gun, you want to replace it. Replace the leaky gun. Yeah. Don't hammer the thing back and forth. Make sure not to leave it off for more than a couple minutes. Yeah. Okay. But, but it's pretty simple if you have a pressure gauge on your machine, you uh, you have the unloader set up, then when you let go of that, if you're, it's a 3000 PSI machine, you don't want to see that go any higher than 3500. Yeah. What happens if it goes higher than 3500? Or like 3000 the, wear it to the pump. Okay. Yeah. Not protecting the pump, which is basically what this is doing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. What, what kind of a loader is this? That's a case on a loader. It's a they call it the soft on loader, and okay. it's a flow sensitive okay. instead of pressure sensitive like the other ones. Okay. So does this is this is what would this be called a pressure trapping on loader? Yeah. So when you let go of the gun, it the pressure stays trapped in the line in the hose, and when you mm -hmm. when you pull the trigger, it goes right, it lets that that pressure out that way. Mm -hmm. Where this one doesn't. Okay. It takes about it a second actually. It kicks really? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's soft, just like you said. Yeah. The advantage with, with the other one, with this kind here, is this is more forgiving than this one. This is flow sensitive. If you have a plug nozzle, yep. you won't have that flow, so it might not kick in. Oh, but I actually have that. That one will spit the dirt out because the pressure is going to be there. Oh. That's, that's the advantage of, of that one. Oh, I never thought about it, that. It means you have to keep whatever that machine calls for. So you may not use. They're these. numbered, yes. Okay, the these, these are these are orifice specific. Uh, yeah. So you gotta make sure if you're gonna put on a, uh, on a loader like this that you've got yeah, a dot in it. They have different model. ratings, like three to five gallons, and then five to eight. Doesn't yeah. this? Um, that one there is- Wider up range? To, up to eight. Up to eight. There's no range. Oh. So in this, you can buy this, by the way, uh, all these unloaders, you, these are came out of stock, you can buy these online. Mm -hmm. um, but you wanna make sure that you know what you're doing, consult your, your manual, uh, so you make sure you got the right one on there. Yeah. Now, let's say your machine came with an unloader like this, can you switch it out to that? Yeah, you can. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. But if you're replacing these, they have numbers stamped on the orifice, on the bypass, and on the, is it inlet or outlet? Yeah, the bypass and the outlet. And the outlet. Yeah, okay. Different numbers stamped on there for different gallons per minute. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now. And they got a match. How many of these do we one. sell? Well, actually, I'll go through the other ones and then I can ask that question, but as a percentage. So what do we have here? That's just a, a loader with a switch. Uh, there's a lot of them with switches that control the uh, automatic shutdown or the heat. Or a timer. So it's integrated into the unloader and then wired in the control panel. And when, but, but we have unload, we have machines like this, the, uh, the machine that this comes on, mm -hmm. doesn't that also have, like might have time delay shut down or things like that, still use that unloader. What is this, what's special about this thing or why would they have this on here? Uh, they have different switches, you know, for different controls. Okay. Different applications. Okay. Yeah. Um, we saw many and of these. Carry, uh, but probably eight different kinds of unloaders and switches. Really? Yeah. So what, what model would this one go on? I mean, yeah. this type of unloader. A PHW, isn't it? So a PHW that has... Not oh, VNG. VNG. A VNG. Oh, okay. Yeah. A VNG. If it's got VNG, I time really shut down. Yeah. Or a BHG, would it be the same one on the BHG, or they use something like this? Uh, probably more like that. Yeah. Okay. All right. 
So just a different type of unloader. Is this a pressure trapping type unloader? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So again, if you're going to order a, an unloader, you want to make sure that you know what particular model. We'll go back to that again. And then what's this unit here, this model here? That one's uh, rated a little bit higher for 21 gallons per minute. Oh. Uh, 4,300 PSI is max. Okay. It's got the bigger uh, inlet, outlet, and bypass. Oh, yeah, you can see that, so yeah. handle more water. Yeah. Yeah. Larger, so, or just, so just. Half inch. Higher rate. It's funny. It's smaller than compared to the that much bigger than the other ones. Yeah, but that is yeah, that is. Yeah, cool. all the ports are bigger. Okay. Yeah. So it handles more volume. So of these, and this is by the way, this is what five of how many different units that we keep in stock? Twenty or more. <laughs> Thirty, really. Uh, yeah. Unloaders are pretty good Carry business for us. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, of all of these unloaders here, what do we sell the most of? Really? VRP, yeah. Percentage wise, 50%? Yeah. Really? So. Probably more. <laughs> really? So uh, we might carry a, a bunch of these, but this is still the big winner. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. good. Oh, that's great. That's pretty informative. Anything else that, uh, you know, kind of a recap, you know, make sure no hammering, setting it right at the 500 PSI spike, making sure it's the right size. Now, is this orifice specific? This is up to eight gallons a minute. Correct. So you could use this on a thousand PSI mm -hmm. washer? Yeah, they're on the thousand electric. Are they? Like the hot twos and things like that? No, the I got private label. Oh yeah, yeah. Or the or you but you could use it on a PHW, a four two, three at one, four three, five at three, six at three, eight at three, all the way on up. Okay. But it caps out at eight gallons a minute. Yeah. Is there a BRT unloader that's larger than eight gallons a minute? I don't believe so. Okay, so we stay in that in that range there. So we'll add a little video in here also of the um, uh, of setting the spike pressure. You know, maybe installing one. You can do that for him. And um, oh, that's great! Thank you guys. That's very informative. Good, good job. Okay, if you need any expert advice, uh, you can always call Ralph and Jason here at our Phoenix location, Scott in our San Diego location. We've got a great online store at www.sceclean.com um, where you we have everything laid out in detail. You can search by unloaders, search by different flows and things of that nature. And we appreciate the business and thanks for tuning in and listening to us here at Spirit Clean Equipment. I'm just gonna show you how to set the spike pressure on um, unloaders. And you want to set it about uh, 500 or 500 psi above your nameplate. Uh, this unit is a uh, 3,000 psi, so we're going to set the spike pressure at 3,500. And just turn the knob on here, but you want to you don't want to go any higher than uh, 500 psi above your nameplate. Okay, let's let it roll here. 